Welcome to Haunted Escapes with Chris and Diane. This podcast will cover our trips to haunted hotels and locations. We will go over a brief history of the location, our personal experiences, and even rate some of the ghost tours in that area. Join us on our haunted escapes. June 1863. The Army of Northern Virginia under Robert E. Lee crosses over the Potomac River and begins his second invasion of the North. He has an army of about 71,000 men. One month later, on July 1st, his army enters Gettysburg, where they are met by the Army of the Potomac under George Meade, who has an army of about 94,000 men. These two armies clash and will be the biggest battle of the American Civil War at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. After three days of brutal combat, casualties will number about 23,000 for the North and more than 3,000 of them would be killed in action. The casualty of the Southern Army would be about 28,000 men, with approximately 3,900 killed in action. The Battle at Gettysburg was the turning point for the American Civil War. In November of 1863, President Abraham Lincoln would come to Gettysburg and dedicate a portion of the battlefield as a cemetery. It was at this occasion that he gave his famous Gettysburg Address. Hello, welcome to Haunted Escapes with Chris and Diane. Hello! So today we'll be talking about Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, the intro that I just read, that's essentially how this, into- this little town eventually became host to one of the biggest battles in American history and the bloodiest battle of the American Civil War. Okay, so what were your first impressions when we got to Gettysburg? We've been there a few times. Gettysburg, it's a nice small town. You wouldn't know, you would not like think that it played such a crucial part in history from going there. It's very... It's got like it's got the original buildings from the battlefield, where they actually have bullet holes in them, and uh, there's the Jenny Wade house you can go to where there's an actual cannonball. They show you where a cannonball came in through the house. Mhm. And now and recently they just opened up a museum you can go into where they have all kinds of things from the battle and they have a recreation where you can go into like a basement and it simulates what the families would have experienced during Mm -hmm. the battle while they were hiding underground yeah there's lights and there's sounds and there's it sounds like people are running above you and it's pretty it's pretty scary actually it's neat because when the uh battle began that's what the people they just hid in their basements because you couldn't get out of town because the uh, soldiers were all over the place and the battlefield itself isn't just the land outside of Gettysburg the town was also part of the battle there was fighting that would go in and out of this of the town and when you go there and you go on some of the walks historical walks and read some things They explain, like, there were soldiers in the city shooting at one another, and they were, certain streets would be taken by the Confederacy, and then you would have other streets where the Union would take it back, and the battle really surrounded the entire area, not just the countryside. And a lot of people think it was, it's just the countryside where, you know, you think battlefield, Mm-hmm. You think out in the open, yeah, there was main parts of the battle there. However, inside the city, there were a lot of battles as well, and it affected a lot of innocent people who were there, such as Jenny Wade, who was the only civilian who was killed there. Yes. And it's a shame how it happened. She was baking bread for the soldiers and a stray bullet came in through the door while she was bent over taking bread out of the oven and it hit her and she died right there. And you can actually go to the Jenny Wade house mm-hmm. and you can walk around, you can take a tour and they explain the whole thing for you. And uh, it's it's very, uh, it's sad thinking that it was just a normal day, you're up there, you're making, you're trying to bake 
And uh, all of a sudden, one minute you're there and you're in your kitchen baking your bread, and the mm-hmm. next minute you're gone. Yeah. And I think the the bullet went through two doors. Yeah. The striker. Yeah, two doors. And uh, like Chris was saying, you can go on a tour of the Jenny Wade house and you see the bedrooms and you see the kitchen and the bullet hole where it went through the two doors. And you see the cellar where they brought her after she died, which is really eerie. And then at one point, uh, before you leave the house, they have a room that has stuff actually from the time of the battle. And they actually have a plank of the floor Mm -hmm. where she bled out on. And it's actually like behind glass, as well as I think the bullet and a few other things. Yeah, walking around Gettysburg, I I was there when I was um, as a teenager. We went there with my uh, my family and my brothers, and I hadn't been there for a few years. And then when I met Chris, we went there. I think the first time we went there was twenty sixteen, maybe. And I have forgotten how close things are in proximity of each other when you're walking around uh, Gettysburg, you're walking around the town, how close the Jenny Wade house is to the Dobbins house, to the Farnsworth Mm -hmm. house. I forgot how close things were to each other. Yeah, it's a very uh, small area, the town itself. Uh, But it's, it's always been a place my family has gone to. We've always enjoyed it. We're all, my whole family... Uh, like my side of the family, we're all real big on history, and my dad would take us to all these places growing up. So I've always liked going there, and I've always thought that it was, I don't know, it's just amazing what happened there and what these men fought and died for. Depending, I mean, certain you can think what you will. Obviously, it was a the South with slavery, and that was wrong. And it was horrible, but. Just the, the the courage and the guts that all of these soldiers had to go and fight for what they believed in and die. It was it's it's a very sobering effect, especially when you're on the actual battlefield outside of town. I've always found that the entire battlefield just has like that eerie, quiet cemetery vibe. cemetery vibe throughout like the entire battlefield. Uh, and it's when you just stand there and think about it and you stand at like where pickets charge you can stand from both where the confederates left and you stare out over all the land they covered and you just think of they had to have known that most of them weren't going to make it yet they still marched forward it's just like normandy the it's the bravery of people it's just amazing and then you can go stand where the north were and you could just imagine seeing wave after wave of soldiers coming forth and you're, they're just getting blown apart and they just continue to come forth. It's just really, really makes you, I don't know, it, it's just always touched like a nerve with me and my family. Mm-hmm. Well, why don't we start where we start each trip to Gettysburg and that's at the Lincoln Diner. Yes, the Lincoln Diner. It's a little restaurant. It's pretty close to right as you enter the town. Uh, right outside of it, there used to be a station for the trains that would drive in and out of Gettysburg. And you can see it, you can see where it was. And the Lincoln Diner looks like a kind of looks like a train car almost. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a great place to go. And we've always gone there every trip. Every single trip we've made to Gettysburg, starting back when I was a kid, it's uh, it's good food, it's good priced, and it also has uh, some ghost stories that are tied in with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, last time we were there, I, I struck up a conversation with one of the people who worked there, and they were telling me that, yeah, that there have been stories of when you go down the basement, because the way the, the bathroom is, is you got to go down into the basement area to go to the men and the women's rooms. And they said that there's a, uh, there's a, that entire area down there, and the stairwell is said to be haunted. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said that they, he's, like, seen things, and they see shadows, and it gets really cold. And, and they see a soldier in the mirror, don't yes, they? Yes, and there's a soldier in the mirror of the restrooms. And he said the one time there was a customer who went down there and uh, 
they went into the bathroom and like they yelled and came running out. And by the time the servers got down to the find out what was going on, it was a lady and she was like hysterical. And she was saying that she saw what looked like a man in the bathroom. And it was, and it, yeah, and when you go there and you go down there, I haven't seen anything there, but when you go down the stairs and you're in that, it's like a long hallway you got to go back to to get to the bathrooms. Mm-hmm. That's got that same weird, eerie vibe that you get from, like, a cemetery where it's just... And this is... I you had this feeling before I even heard knew about, like, the ghost stuff. It's just a very strange feeling you can get when you go down there. Yeah. Um, when you go down the, the Lincoln Diner, it's, it's a smaller... Like, it's a smaller little diner. It's got great food. You go and you get a seat, and then you get waited on. And, yeah, when you go down into the basement, it's a very different feeling than the upstairs where it's all light and, you know, everybody's having a good time and and everything like that. And the woman who saw the soldier in the mirror in the bathroom said it was in full uniform, and I think he just vanished after mm-hmm. she saw him. Yeah, she saw him. She yells, and it just, like, faded out. And then she ran out of the room, and that's when the workers got down. They were talking to her. And they checked to see if uh, anybody was in the area, and maybe if somebody, a man had gone in there, and then maybe ran out to go to hide in, like, the men's room, but there was nobody in the area. So that was a pretty pretty cool story. And then usually after we go to the Lincoln Diner, our next stop is we usually go on to, uh, we go into like the battlefield. Mm-hmm. And the battlefield is e- is enormous. And the first day, uh, you can, you'll can you learn that there's an area of the battlefield called Seminary uh, Ridge. And there's a Lutheran seminary that overlooks this ridge. And at uh, one time, me and Diane, we had gone, we were there, and uh, we got out of the car. There's like an audio tour you can listen to in your car, but we had listened to that, and we had turned the car off, and we got out, and we were standing there, and uh, like off in the distance, we heard what sounded like a uh, cannon fire. Yeah. And there was no reenactment that was supposed to be happening, so now, could it have been something in the town? Yes, but at the time, we were talking about it, and you're there, and it was real faint. You just hear it, like, echoing out in the background. It was a very uh, eerie, it's a very eerie, like, uh, feeling and experience. Yeah. yeah, we were just standing out there talking about, I don't even remember what we were talking about. I think it was the battlefield. I was explaining, like, the seminary and uh, how they used the turret at the top to look out. Mm-hmm. And then we hear the cannon go off, and it was like, you kind of looked at each other, like, was that a cannon? And then we heard it again. Yeah. And we're like, yeah, that definitely sounds like a cannon. Yeah, it was pretty neat. And like I said, there was no, nothing on the books that were supposed to be like a, uh, a reenactment there at that time or that day. Mm-hmm. So, and it was early too. It was like, like I said, it was right after breakfast, so... Uh, maybe 9, 30, 10 o'clock when we heard it. And it was just very, uh, it was just one of those interesting things that happens and could have been one thing, but who knows, it could have been something paranormal. Yep. So then usually after we go around the battlefield, you can check all the different sites and you can see all the different, there's tons of monuments. And uh, it's like an all-day event when you go through it. Then uh, afterwards, you have uh, you can stay on the battlefield until it gets dusk, and then you're supposed to leave. But <laughs> yeah, but a lot most people, it's kind of I guess the the government doesn't really enforce it too bad. It's kind of like a known thing that people do. Well, they'll stay after technically the battlefield closes and they'll stay there and they'll do some ghost hunting, which is what we did. Yes, we did that the one day. We wound up going. Uh, my brother was with us and uh, we had gone to drive to... Uh, we are driving around to go to Devil's Den, which Devil's Den is an outcropping of rocks that is right across from Little Round Top. 
And Little Round Top was uh, part of the battle that was fought on uh, the second day. And it was uh, the soldiers under uh, James Longstreet from the Confederacy were trying to take the hill, which was the uh, far left of the Union Army. And if it had collapsed, they thought that the, it would have caused the whole Union Army to co cave in on itself. So uh, they threw a bunch of soldiers at it. And that's where uh, people have probably heard of the 20th Maine and uh, Chamberlain, Colonel... Uh, Colonel Chamberlain, he had, he was up there on the, he was in charge of the soldiers that were up there protecting the left. And, you know, I'm sure if you've seen the movie or you've read about it, there's a charge that he comes after they run out of ammo and he charges down the hill and they wind up sweeping the Confederacy off of it. And uh, there's a story that uh, I read in a, a book I have, which is by Mark Nesbitt. It's called The Ghosts of Gettysburg. And uh, if you haven't ever heard of it or read it, I would recommend picking it up. It's not that expensive. It might be like 7 maybe seven to $10. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one story said it's got stories of the battles and like what the what they think could have happened as well as uh, like stories from supposedly people who participated, who wrote it down. And there's this one story, uh, if you read the book, it says that uh, some of the soldiers not only did, when Chamberlain called for the charge, these soldiers believed that they saw in the midst of the fighting, uh, they swore that they saw what looked like George Washington on his white horse trying, That's to, crazy. trying to lead the soldiers down. And, this, and the thing was... The father of the Union arrives to uh, help keep the Union from from falling apart. Yeah, sometimes you forget that ghosts aren't just, like, modern-day people just aren't seeing ghosts. The people back then, too. back then in the 1800s saw spirits uh -huh. and apparitions as well. So that's a very, that's an interesting story in the book. And it's neat to imagine that that could have happened, you know. George Washington, the father of the country, the time when the country's at its worst, and the Union he fought to, to, you know, create is about to fall apart, and he shows up in spirit to help lead a charge that will ultimately turn the course of the battle. Well, yeah, he shows up there on a white horse well, yeah, well, as, like... A savior. Yeah, it's a guiding figure for them to get behind. It's just a cool little story, and it, yeah, it's in that book, and, and it's it's neat. And Chris has a huge crush on George Washington. Hey, look. Like, I think if there was anyone he would leave me for, it would be George Washington. <laughs> <laughs> hey, in my defense, the man was an amazing uh, person. He was the father of the country. Uh, he led us to victory uh, afterwards when uh, he retired. He had a nice butt. The union, whatever. <laughs> the union comes back and they're having problems and he winds up going to become the president. He takes it again. He leads us through our infancy. Then the man, there was no set terms. The man could have become a king. They would have made him a king. And he gave up all that possible power to return to his normal life and how many people especially politicians in this day and age hey just look at the house and the senate and how many of these people have been in there until they're in their 80s and 90s mm -hmm. how many of them do you think would have followed that example and given up that power yes next as, to none as i said huge crush and as we approach Valentine's Day, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, he writes out a Valentine's Day card to George Washington and, you know, sends it up to Mount Vernon. I want to go there. Uh, but anyway, back on topic. <laughs> so uh, then the next one after after you go there, there's a... Uh, as we were going back on the, the, to the battlefield to do our little ghost hunt, uh, my brother is looking out the window of the car, and he like, he like call yells like yells out to me. And he's like, "Yo, look at that!" And I we I I'm like, "What?" And I look out the window, and it looked like 
uh, in the wheat field, which is all another part of the battle, uh, the battlefield. Uh, it looked like uh, what looked to be a soldier. It looked like a like a Confederate soldier in full, like with his full outfit on with the backpack, marching across the wheat field. And I saw it, and then I like I'd like double look, and uh, but then it like disappeared. And then that was pretty neat. And then we went to little uh, to the Devil's Den. And then we were on there, and we were trying to do some ghost hunting. But there are so many people. Mm-hmm. It was very different. Like, yeah, we tried to do EVPs, but... Yeah, all the audio was good. Yeah, but, yeah, it wasn't no good. There was too many people there. They were all talking, and it was they were all trying to do the same thing. So it wasn't really ideal for that. But it was still neat to be there at nighttime, and it was... It's really, really creepy. We actually went mm-hmm. to the wheat field... After we saw the thing, and uh, we were walking around, and it's very easily to get lost. Yeah, yeah, it's like walking in a cornfield. Yeah, it it is. It's like walking in a corn maze, and if you ain't paying attention, you can get lost very easily. We we kept trying to stay as close to each other as we could. We didn't really want to split up. But, uh... Yeah, and let me say that, of course, I didn't see this. I was the one driving... And it was late, and we were trying to find our way out of the battlefield because one of the gates that we came in was locked or mm-hmm. something like that happened. Yeah, it was something like that. So I didn't see any of that, but uh, we did. I did do some EVPs. I was trying to get anything out there, but we didn't get anything. If we did get anything, the audio was contaminated because there was a whole lot of people yeah, there. Yeah, and you, you can't, when it's like that, you can't really say, oh, look what I got, and it could have been anybody talking. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that was pretty cool. And then, uh, then we went to dinner at uh, the Dobbins House. Yes. Which is a really nice restaurant there, and it's got, on the bottom half of the, ha- it's got the house itself. Then you go down these stairs, and they have a, uh, like, a tavern. Mm. And the tavern is, like, all, it's, uh, the servers are all dressed up in period clothing. Mm-hmm. You can sit down, and you can have your food. And, uh... They also have memorabilia on the wall from the movies. Yes, yes, from the, from the, yeah, yeah, they do from the movie Gettysburg. Because they were both filmed there, weren't they? Well, yeah, all the movie Gettysburg was filmed in Gettysburg. That's where they all went. And I think they had, like, pictures of, like, uh... Of, uh, Martin Sheen. Yeah, yeah, of, like, the, yeah, the famous and... people talking and I'm taking pictures with them. So that's pretty cool. And that also has a ghost story. There's a ghost story about the Dobbins house where there's actually two stories. One story is in the main house, there was a young woman mm-hmm. who, uh... It's like the, you know, the quintessential had to, was in love with someone, he dies, she still haunts, and they th- say they can see her, pit her, like, uh, face looking out the one upstairs window. And then the second, uh, the second ghost that supposedly haunts there is down in the tavern part. Okay. Where we were, and that ghost is supposedly a Union soldier. Oh, wow. And there are photos, supposed photos, of this uh, soldier on uh, the internet you can look up and check out. I don't think we took any pictures down in the tavern. I don't remember. We might have taken one or two because we thought it was cool that all the people were dressed up. Yeah. But I'd have to find them on my phone. So then after the Dobbins house, we went to the ghost tours. Out of, there are a bunch there. Uh, we have not done all of them. We went on uh, three. And the first one we went on, which is the big one, that's the Ghosts of Gettysburg tour. That is the one that the book that I told you the story about George Washington on Little Round Top comes from, and uh, it's written by Mark Nesbitt. And it mm-hmm. just so happened when we went there, uh, Mark Nesbitt was actually inside the shop that they run the tour out of and he signed my copy of the book Mm -hmm. which was pretty neat and i think there's um the book is called the ghost of gettysburg and i think there's a couple different volumes too yes there is i just had volume one 
But uh, that one was, that tour was very much into the history of the town. And I, they told you ghost stories as well. But the guy I remember really was heavy on telling history. And it's probably just the guy we have because it gets great reviews. But when we went to it, it was neat. But the guy just went on and on about the historical aspect more so than the ghosts. But some of the ghost stories he did tell us were pretty cool. Like, he told us one about uh, Gettysburg College. Mm -hmm. And there's a story where these uh, people who work there, they wind up having one long day at work, and it's nighttime. And they leave. They're getting ready to leave, so they go to the elevator, and they wind up, they're up on, like, the third floor, and they wind up hitting down to go to the first floor to exit. Well, once they get in there, the elevator keeps going down. It skips over the first floor. Oh, really? Yeah, and it goes to the basement. And then the doors open, and they see uh, it looks like the uh, a, a Civil War hospital. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I'm getting goosebumps. I remember yeah, yeah, about I that too. one. And they say that, like, that it opens up and there's, like, three people who all told this guy, Mark Nesbitt, who went around and collected these stories. They all said that this happened to them. And they walk out there and they see, uh, yeah, it looks, they have doctors that are sawing off the limbs of the soldiers and there's the cries of the soldiers in pain. That's crazy. And they said at the one point the doctor, like, turns to look at where they're at and then, like, one of the doctors is, like, waving for them to come in. Oh, like the help? Yeah, and then when oh, the, that's crazy. then when the they don't the another one of the doctors starts heading towards the uh, the elevator. The elevator. I'd be pressing that button. Well, that's to what close the guy the door. says he's doing. <laughs> he's hitting the button to close the door, and right before the the doctor gets to the elevator, the doors close and it goes up, and they can and they get out. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, so that that's a really good story. And there's another story of the college. It's called the Blue Boy. And it's a story where it's in the female wing, uh, dormitory wing of the college. And uh, these girls are there just one night, and it's real late, and it's in the middle of the winter. And it's real cold, and they look outside, and they see what looks like a little kid. He's like uh, maybe five, and he's standing outside of their oh, window. Oh, yeah, I remember this. And he's like shivering. And they invite the little boy into the into the room, mm -hmm. and in the story, the, the kid comes into the room. Yeah. And then the kid's in there, but he won't talk to them, and he won't say anything. He's just sitting there, and he's shivering, and his lips are all blue. I think does he say I'm cold or something? He might have, and then uh, the the lady in charge of the dorms is coming to do a check on them, and she knocks on the door to come in, and they had rushed the little boy outside again mm -hmm. and they closed the doors like the windows uh the woman comes in she's looking around she sees there's nobody there she goes to leave and when she does the girls go to open up the door or like, open gone. up the window and yeah the little boy is gone that's but they find the two little footprints in the snow right outside the windowsill that's crazy so that's a cool story too and then uh after that he, we went through a bunch of other stories, and they took us through downtown Gettysburg, and then they stopped at this one. It was a Lutheran church. And back then, all these buildings were all used, especially like churches and stuff. They were used as field hospitals because there were men who were wounded, and they were all over the town and everything. They needed places to bring them. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy when you're on these tours about... How you stop at all of these different buildings and how they were, yeah, they were used as makeshift hospitals. And there was one story, I forget where we were, but they said that they were hacking off a lot of, like, limbs. And the limbs were, they were putting them outside and the limbs were reaching up to the window. Yeah, yeah, that was, I think that might have been one of the stories in the college. The college has a lot of pretty cool stories about it. Uh, but this one, it was the Lutheran Church that's on, I think it was on Baltimore Street, or it was in the town. And uh, you go, they went in there, and they were telling, well, you couldn't go in, we sat out on the steps. And they were talking about how uh, it was like 
like you could hear supposedly certain times people have claimed to hear like cries uh, of pain. yeah like the cries of pain and banging and all kinds of stuff like that at the uh, coming from the uh, this church and also the floors from all the blood it was like in buckets the floors are like permanently dyed almost with a reddish tinge to them that's crazy yeah that's crazy that's a lot of that's a lot of blood but that was that was the ghost of Gettysburg tour that was it was pretty neat I would definitely do it again just because I have a feeling that it's probably a lot cooler with a different tour guide. I mean, our tour guy was all right, but he did like going on about the the history of the whole place. Yeah, he went into more of the history yeah. than the ghost. Yeah, and I'm all about history of things, but when I want to go on a ghost tour, I want to hear ghost stories. But uh, it wasn't bad. I would definitely try to... I would do it again. And then the next one we went on was called Ghostly Images Tour. That was a pretty cool one. It was held at the Farnsworth House. Now, the Farnsworth House is... One of the houses that were actually there at the time of the battle. And uh, that it has bullet holes in the walls out front. And it's also believed that there's a, there's a, on the very top of the Farnsworth house, there was a, uh, with the attic, they believe it was a haven of uh, sharpshooters for the Confederacy. And there are people, people say that, the bullet that struck Jenny Wade and killed her was fired from the Farnsworth house. That's crazy. And they show you that if you look out like the window in the attic, you can look straight across and you can see the Jenny Wade house. Oh, that's eerie. And they said that that's where the sharpshooter was uh, who shot and killed her. And uh, so this tour was neat. They took us in the basement of the Farnsworth house and we sat down and they started showing us, like, uh, well, pictures. Pictures of what were supposed to be, like, ghosts that have been caught by people. Mm-hmm. And they also showed us some pictures of, uh, like, back spirit photography, which is where they would take photos of people and they would believe that the ghosts of your loved ones could be seen in it. Like, there's one photo, it's, it's like, famous, and it's uh, Abraham Lincoln's wife sitting on a chair by herself, and there's a picture taken, and behind her, it's supposed to be the ghost of Lincoln. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got, like, his hands on her and whatnot. Now, a lot of that has been, has come off as it's a lot of double exposure mm-hmm. because they use glass plates, but it's still a cool tour. You can go there, and they tell you the stories about it, and... It's creepy, and yeah, it was uh, that was a really that was a really fun one. I would recommend that one too. And then the third one was uh, the Civil War Ghost Tour. Now the Civil War Ghost Tour that took us to uh, uh, we were walked around the town. But we went by where like the graveyard was, mm-hmm. where the cemetery. They tell you stories about the cemetery, and then we went to uh, the orphanage. Yes. <laughs> and now the orphanage has some really good, like, weird, scary things, ghosts and stuff that happen there, and these kids were really mistreated. Yeah, it's a shame. And they're telling us the story, and my younger brother's with us, and he's and we're all snapping pictures. Well, he snaps a picture, and in the picture, he gets a shot of, uh, there's a tree out front of the orphanage. Mm-hmm. And in the tree, you can make out what looks like it could be, like, a little kid. Yeah, hanging out in the tree. Hanging up on, like, one of the branches, sitting on one of the branches. And the thing that was creepy is after we saw that, the lady act who gave the tour looked at it. Yeah. And she saw the same thing, and she's like, oh, yeah. And she's like, and, like, the stories say that, like, the little Mm -hmm. kids would were known to climb up there when they would be playing and stuff. He's got, I think he may still have the, the picture. If he does, I'll try to get it so we can post it on our, uh, YouTube, our YouTube, ver- our YouTube, like version of the story where we put all our, our pictures from the trips on there to the story. Uh, that one was neat. And then also on the civil war goes to where we went back to the Farnsworth house and they actually took us through the Farnsworth house and they told us some stories of it. 
They told us some stories about, uh, like, the attic. We got to go up to the attic, and we sat in the attic, and that's when they told us the thing about the Jenny Wade house. And then they talked about... Uh, the attic's supposed to be haunted, too. Yeah, it is. The whole the whole house is supposed yeah. to be haunted. But uh, there was also a story about, what's the little boy's name? Jeremy. Jeremy, yeah. Story about the little boy named Jeremy, who is one of the most active ghosts in the Farnsworth house. And I think he was, like, nine or yes, something like seven that. Nine, yeah, I think. And uh, he was the son of the owner of the Farnsworth house. And he wound up, he was playing ball or something. He ran out into the street and got trampled by a... Uh, a carriage. Yeah, a carriage. And he died. And it said that, like, his uh, ghost haunts there and he's really active. And he has his own... Uh, he, has his own room. he has his own room that you can rent and stay at, which we're going to be trying to do that. Yes, in the next couple of months, we're going to be trying to go up to the Farnsworth house. It's not too far from us, and we've always wanted to stay there. Yeah, and we're talking about seeing if we can uh, book his room, and we're going to try to stay the night there, and we'll see if anything happens. And if so, we'll do another podcast, and we'll talk about that. And... Uh, so, yeah, that was another really cool ghost tour. But, I mean, that's pretty much, I think we went over everything we did there, really. Well, the last thing that we, well, one of the last things we did there was, it was also at the Farnsworth house called the Haunted Cell, Haunted Cellar Presentation. And down in the cellar of the Farnsworth house, they have it decorated as, like, a funeral home, almost? Yeah, kind of, because they would, like, lay the bodies out in a... Like wake, yes. so they had like uh, they they went over things from that era, like uh, type of outfits women would wear when they were mourning. Uh, they talked about the photographs that they would take of the of the dead, mm-hmm. and then they had like this doll that was supposedly haunted, and then they had that creepy coffin. Uh huh. And there's a mirror there, and you're supposed to see somebody behind you, or yeah. you're supposed to see your like yourself dead or something. I uh, I think it's someone behind you. I don't remember. And then the other thing was where they had the door on the side. Oh yeah, and Elaine Warren. Yeah, was Elaine there. Warren apparently did a Lorraine thing. Warren. I'm Lorraine, sorry. Lorraine, yes, Lorraine Warren. Now a lot of stuff goes around about the Warrens about they may be full of uh, crap. But this story, as he told us, was that you go down the basement and there's a door and there was some kind of a dark spirit yes. or something she that lives the behind entity, there. Yeah. And they got some kind of, she put some kind of red mark on the door. She put the mark of a cross. Something like that, yeah. That's supposed to protect it and keep it at bay. And you can see, they show you the mark that's on there. So that was a pretty good, uh, that was pretty cool too. Yeah, I think that brings us to the end. Yeah, I mean, there's tons of stuff to see there. You can go and you can go see uh, General Meade's headquarters. You can go see General Lee's headquarters. There, they have all kinds of stuff, and then of course, uh, Pickett's Charge. There's so much to do at Gettysburg. We go there. We go there a lot because there is a lot to do and see. So, uh, and yeah, that's pretty much everything I think for this this story in this episode uh thank you all for listening yes thank you all for listening to not only this podcast but our three other podcasts and also for listening on youtube and amazon music and iheart radio and all the platforms yes we really appreciate it and i hope that you guys keep listening because we like doing this and like telling the stories about the things it be places we've gone and things we've seen. And again, if you guys who listen have any places you've been, things you've seen, weird experiences, I mean, send us some stories and we'll do a whole episode where we'll read stories mm-hmm. from uh, the people listening. Uh, you can send anything you have to uh, our website, our email at penepicproductions at gmail.com. And yeah, it will. Just if you have anything, send it on over. And I also want to add that a YouTube version of this podcast will be up next Friday, and that will be with pictures from our trip. Um, I always put, uh, I always make a video with pictures from our trip from, and put them on YouTube on the next Friday after 
our podcast comes out. Yeah, so if like you listen to the podcast, but you wonder what the places look like, you can go on YouTube and yeah, it's uh, it's Haunted Escapes with Chris and Diane. Yes. And you can just look it up and we have videos on there. We have the Myrtles. Uh, every place we've been so far, we've done the Myrtles, the Magnolia Manor and uh, New Orleans. Magnolia Mansion. Magnolia Mansion in New Orleans. And uh, Salem was last week. So there's some pictures up about that. And then, yeah, we'll have ones up about Gettysburg and all. We'll, we'll show you some of the places we saw and went while we were there. So, yeah, if you are interested in trying to see what these places might look like, and if you haven't had a chance to go yourself, check out our uh, YouTube page, and you guys could at least see it, and then maybe you'll like it enough to where you'll want to go out there and enjoy your own haunted escapes. Yep. So and we're we will soon be on Apple uh, Apple Podcasts. Yeah, we're working on that now. Uh, so yeah, that that's everything. Uh, thank you again. Yes, thank you again. And uh, next week we're debating either to do uh, Fort Mifflin which is a fort in Philadelphia, or if we'll just go over some uh, eerie personal stories yes. <laughs> that have happened to us in the past. And, um, uh, so we'll, let, we'll, uh, we'll see which one we decide to do. But thank you for listening, and uh, I hope you guys are willing to continue following us. It means a lot to us. Uh, so once again, thank you for joining us on this, our Haunted Escape. Bye. Bye-bye.